Hello and welcome back to Crypto Novus, where newbies become masters. And I'm your host, Chris Brown. I wanted to take a t some time and put together a presentation for just newbies to the world of cryptocurrency and to Bitcoin. I do consulting outside of the channel and I put together a presentation that I share with people who don't know anything about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. So I wanted to share that with you and with those of you who are part of the channel and part of the Crypto Novus community who fit that category. So let's get into it. So in this presentation, I'm gonna to introduce to you Faith Finance, which I'm the executive director of, a little bit about what Faith Finance does. We'll talk about Crypto Coin Basics, the crypto market, uh, Bitcoin and as an asset and how it compares to other assets. And then we'll talk a little bit about crypto buying and Normally it would be a Q&A before this presentation will eliminate that component to the presentation. Okay, first, first, Faith Finance. I'm the executive director of Faith Finance. We are a nonprofit organization, which we help basically people uh, manage their personal finances using biblical principles. The concept is simply biblical stewardship, which is a lifestyle. Part of my credentials with that is I am a financial coach and I was certified through Financial Peace University, which is a part of Dave Ramsey's organization. But as it pertains to cryptocurrency, one of the things that I really took some time to do is I attended an online class from UC Berkeley Haas School of Business. They have a, a series of courses there that deal with cryptocurrency and cryptography. And I took one that talked about blockchain technologies and applications for business, which really helped me understand the business case and the business uses for blockchain and, and how cryptocurrency projects or tokens or coins will be utilized in the future. That led me to, to starting this channel, Crypto Novus, and it's a division of Faith Finance. And you know, right now I have a, a little over 1,800, almost 1,900 subscribers. And then I also am a writer on Quora. And if you're not familiar with Quora, it's a Q&A platform. I have about 1.8 million views there. And I'm, the, I'm a top 10 writer in about five or six categories on that platform. So let's talk quickly about crypto coin basics. So what is cryptocurrency? At its core, cryptocurrency is, tip, is a decentralized form of money that's supposed to be used over the internet. The granddaddy of them all, if you will, is Bitcoin, which was lost in 2008. It is, of course, the largest and the biggest and the most influential and the most well-known cryptocurrency. And why is it digital money? Because Bitcoin has proven itself to be durable, it's portable, it's divisible, it's it has uniformity, there is a limited supply, and it is acceptable. Bitcoin has established itself as a store of value, which we will talk about more. Now, there, the pros to, to Bitcoin is, in fact, it is digital money. The con is that it, as a technology, it is cumbersome, hence why a lot of the other altcoins have come on to try to improve upon the technology to make the transaction speeds more scalable and a lot faster. So what are altcoins? Altcoins are currencies that were launched after Bitcoin, and therefore they, all, they are alternative to Bitcoin. Uh, example and presently right now there's about 8,900, a little bit over that in total cryptocurrencies. If you look at coin market cap, and some examples of that, those would be Ethereum, which is known as ETH, Cardano, Bitcoin Cash, and Engine, just as examples. When you're looking at cryptocurrency coins or tokens, they kind of fit in about six different categories, as you can see. Store of value being the main one transferring value from one person to a next. Bitcoin being the top one, Litecoin's a part of that. You know, Monero is a privacy coin. Then you have developing networks like Ethereum and Cardano, which there's a lot of conversation about that. Then there's data networks or links or, you know, coins or tokens that help the networks work. There's incentivized coins, which you can earn interest on. Uh, there's utility coins, and then there's, of course, stable coins, which try to keep their value associated with the, the U.S. dollar, and you can see the listing there. An example of that would be USDT or USDC. DAI is another good example of, of a stable coin. Okay, so let's take a look at the cryptocurrency market. Okay, since 2017, 
the improvements within the marketplace is there's more retail users. For those retail users, there's better on-ramps so that they can buy and sell crypto or exchange cryptocurrencies. There's improved custody solutions or wallets. There's new Bitcoin only companies, a lot more education on the various platforms and exchanges. But the biggest change has been the institutional and the corporate investors and the amount of money that they have actually poured into this market to buy Bitcoin, as well as creating other trust funds for the other assets. Let's talk a little bit about market dominance. Uh, the total crypto market as of today, 324, is about one point trillion dollars and that fluctuates all the time bitcoin's dominance in the in the marketplace typically ranges around 60 to 65 percent which presently is about 1.06 trillion but when the bull run peaks it some it tends to drop and its drop as low as about 35 percent the market dominance for altcoins combined ranges 40 to 35 percent or around 640 billion dollars and their values actually spike up up to around 65% during the bull run peak. And you can find more information on this at crypto, at, excuse me, at CoinMarketCap and at CoinGecko.com. This is a chart that kind of shows why that shift happens. So, you know, this is an example of what happened back in 2017 in the last bull run. You, the, the bottom uh, kind of brown line is actually what Bitcoin did. But then the blue line is actually what the altcoin market did. And towards the end of the bull run, what tends to happen as Bitcoin spikes, the altcoins really take a huge spike. And so uh, we're beginning to see that now. Uh, if you look at this chart back in 2017 in around May, and we are at March right now, the altcoins started to spike up. And we've seen a few of the altcoins in this bull run, you know, gain, you know, some significant gains in the month of February. So I think we're beginning to see this little spike that the that the altcoins are beginning to make in this run. The other thing that you need to understand is that there is a Bitcoin halving event, and this is what the market cycle is all about. It's a four year cycle. The halving is essentially, it's the reward that miners get for transactions. Every four years, that reward gets cut in half. And what is the value? The value is the bullet points listed. It, it limits the, the coins being issued. It restrains crypto inflation. It contributes to the rise of the Bitcoin price, supply and demand, and it maintains miners' interest because as fewer as, as the mining reward goes down and fewer coins are being mined, the price goes up. So therefore, the reward per coin actually increases. And it's it's simply a supply and demand dynamic, and you can kind of equate it to stocks. Uh, so um, as 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 stock values as stock quantity goes down, stock values go up and the supply becomes more scarce. Bitcoin scarcity is real and the institutional uh, demand for Bitcoin is increasing as they're wanting to increase or shift some of their dollars into their treasury, some of their treasury dollars into from from fiat into crypto. So uh, logically, the price of Bitcoin is going to increase. This kind of is a nice chart that kind of explains the market cycles. So you basically have five phases to a complete cycle within uh, the four years. The yellow indicates the bull run phase, which is what we're in now, and that typically starts right after having. Once the bull market peaks to its top price, then there is a bear market phase. Um, after that comes to, a, and once the bear market reaches its final bottom, there is an accumulation phase that occurs. There is an expansion phase after that, and then another reaccumulation phase right before the halving. And you can kind of see here in this chart that as each halving has occurred, the volatility of Bitcoin has, and the crypto market in general, has decreased. In the very, very beginning, you had a huge difference between where the price started and where it actually peaked in the bull market. And then there was a, a, a very significant drop from the top price down to the bear market low. And as you look at each one of these, that gets a little bit smaller as there's as Bitcoin and the market adoption of the cryptocurrencies in general becomes more in place. This is a nice chart that kind of shows what happens relative to price 12 months before having and 12 months after having. 
to really kind of hone in on this, you'll notice that in February of this year, we hit 57,000, uh, almost 58,000 was the peak number for Bitcoin. And that was an increase from the halving of actually 558%. So the question is, is now what will it do in May, a year later? If you, if you look at the first halving, you know, Bitcoin actually did 8,000% plus uh, increase from its halving. The second halving was only 285%. So the question now is, if it's already hit 558, what will be the next number? Would in fact, would is it possible uh, that Bitcoin can hit 100,000 or doing 11x from its halving position last May? This is a quick chart that takes a look at the third halving and what might be possible. You can kind of see how Bitcoin has been performing. Uh, what this is essentially showing is past having performance, the range, the dark blue line is the average. Uh, the kind of gold line is what the price performance had, has been. The red is what I've actually added to it since then. We have crossed the $50,000 line. We are sitting at a little around 300 days past the halving. So here we are at March 21st, oh, excuse me, 24th. And the target of April 18th of Bitcoin potentially hitting 100,000 is what's shown here in the graph. Now, the price action will probably not follow that blue line exactly, as you can kind of tell by the gold and the red. But it is an interesting, it is interesting to see how closely it has hit the 50,000 mark based on where we think these numbers have shown us that it could possibly be. You'll also notice that in this chart, it shows that Bitcoin could reach as high as 387 in May, and then by October 17th, drop back down to 286. Not sure at this point, but there is a lot of conversation that at the peak of this, at the peak of this bull run, that Bitcoin could see 300,000. Okay, this is a quick chart that kind of shows the corporate interest into Bitcoin. This is a little dated, but you can kind of see a list of companies uh, MicroStrategy being very much at the top and how many Bitcoin they have purchased. This At the time this was present, print, printed, it was back in last quarter of last year, I believe, or the or beginning of just this year. They have since bought more Bitcoin than the 38,000 that's shown here. And they did so when Bitcoin had its last little dip back towards the tail end of February. But the point is that uh, there's a lot of corporate interest. They're trying to shore up their corporate treasuries that presently have cash in them, and they're wanting to take, switch out that fiat currency with, apt, with actually a cryptocurrency, and they're focusing on Bitcoin. Some are actually diversifying, and they're going into other assets, such as Cardano, and I've reported on that before. But the point is this. These are large corporations, but the, the smaller, smaller ones when you're talking about the big boys. You know, Apple alone has over $200 billion in cash on its balance sheets. And if, if a company like that decided to switch into fee, uh, to switch their fee out, out with crypto, you can only imagine what it could do to the price of Bitcoin. So let's look at Bitcoin and as an asset and compare it to some other assets. When you're looking at Bitcoin and you're looking at Bitcoin's value, one is Bitcoin has a store of value and, and it is a value anchor. The other is Bitcoin is in fact scarce. There's only 21 million coins to be mined. There will actually be less than that in circulation. And the reason why is there's, there is the presumption at this point or the estimate that about 4 million of those coins will in fact be lost or destroyed. And the Bitcoin market is small. When you compare it to other assets like gold, you will see that Bitcoin has a long ways to go in terms of increasing in value to be compared to that level. And we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. So in general, people can argue about there's generally five different asset classes. You've got your real estates, you've got equities, your commodities, your cash, your currency, and your fixed income. Cryptocurrency falls either under commodities or cash currency. I'm not sure which one you'll place it in, but that, that, that debate is still open. You'll take a look at the price performance of these different assets in 2020. It, it, you know, the chart here takes into account how much they recovered from the dip due to coronavirus and then just their overall 2020 returns. The interesting comparison is that when you take a look at 
Bitcoin and you compare it to gold in the S&P 500, you can see that, okay, back in March, April of 2020, you can see everyone's taken their dip, but Bitcoin far outperformed traditional gold and the S&P 500. I took some time to actually do a breakdown of looking at Bitcoin in, re in relationship to gold spot, silver spot, the S&P 500, and even the, the NASDAQ. And the one that came the closest to competing with Bitcoin was silver spot it, from its yearly high to its yearly low, it did 140%, but Bitcoin still did 475%. This takes a look at Bitcoin in relationship to other companies and their value. Uh, the red arrow kind of shows where it, the bracket that we're in right now, we're in between the $30,000 and $100,000 value. When Bitcoin was at $40,000, it was around the same value as Facebook. When Bitcoin gets to about $100,000, it's going to be comparative to Apple and a little bit above Amazon. As I mentioned before, Bitcoin is relatively small relative to the gold market. However, a $600,000 price for Bitcoin can get it up to the level of where gold is presently. And then if you compare it to US federal debt, if Bitcoin reaches 1.4 million per unit, that would be equivalent to the United States federal debt. So 2024 will be the next halving. The block reward will be reduced in half again to 3.125. Now this was the last year. Plan B made some suggested prices for Bitcoin. And they suggested that it would be 100,000 after the 22, 2020 halving. They projected 400,000 after the 2024, and they projected 3 million after 2028. Right now, Bitcoin is sitting just under 60,000, and it is projected that it could get as high as 300. So 100, 150, 300, 200. It'll be interesting to see where Bitcoin finally rests at, it, at the peak in this bull run cycle. Okay, for those of you that wanna buy crypto, a few things to think about. When you're thinking about what to buy and the price to pay for it, there are 12 price influencers for cryptocurrency and they're listed here. Most of my videos try to handle item number one, dealing with supply and demand. Item number two, de dealing with market uh, delusion. Uh, we try to touch on the number 11, which is technical advancements, and then number 10, influences of cross-currency, meaning Bitcoin's value relative to the altcoins or vice versa. There's 12 here. Some of them are sentiment-driven. Some of them are variables beyond your control. But it is important for you to take into account as you're looking at an asset, why you would want to buy it, and just kind of remember these 12 and you know pick the ones that mean really the most to you as, an, as a newbie into the market. Some top crypto exchanges to take a look at. So what's really an exchange? An exchange is where you can buy, sell, or trade cryptocurrency, for those of you who don't know. And a resource to find a full list of that would be going to investopedia.com. So here are a few. Here are the top, here are some six, there are six here that I've listed uh, that I found on um, CoinMarketCap. Binance is one, Coinbase and Coinbase Pro sit kind of in number two. Number three is Kragen. Number four is Hobie Global. Uh, Cash App is great for beginners, and I would highly recommend also Gemini. Now, so this is Coinbase. Uh, Swan, I think, is also a great place that you can go if you if you just want to invest into Bitcoin only, um, and you want a dollar cost average. They have a great pro a series of programs that you could be involved with there. And then for those that are interested in IRAs, Bitcoin IRA is another great location and platform to use as well. Top crypto wallets. So what is a wallet? A wallet is either on, it's either online or offline storage. And the best and most secure is offline. Um, so the idea would be to pick a wallet which meets your needs in terms of in what kind of cryptocurrencies you're going to buy, how, ma how many you're going to buy, and exactly how you want to keep it. So here is a list of six. Uh, the one that's in the picture is the Ledger Nano X. It's a hardware wallet, which is has proven itself and its use and its security over the years. As you'll notice, there's two on the list that's produced by this co company. It's called the Nano X and the Nano S. Uh, but for beginners, Exodus would be a wallet that you may want to have, and that's online. 
uh, but be aware of fees. Uh, Electrum is for Bitcoin only, um, and Marsilium is for, for mobile users. And then the, the, the Ledger Nano S, they say get the big bang, that's the biggest bang for your buck. That, that one is probably the easier one to use between the two. And that's it for this particular video. It's kind of quick and straightforward. Uh, again, if you liked the video and the information in, press the like button. And uh, by all means, those of you who are new, please feel free to join and subscribe to the Crypto Novus channel. We would love to have you. Again, Crypto Novus is where newbies become masters. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.